So in my study, I did some research. And so this will help you. you. You'll have people in your families, and I'm not saying you push this on them, but if they ask for counsel, if they're willing to ask for advice, this will give you some information to talk them through. I want to give you the seven reasons why people disagree with this. Whenever you, you give a biblical truth, the world will push back. Even some Christians will push back. But here's the thing. This is God's truth, and God's truth doesn't change. If a church changes its position on a moral issue, God hasn't changed. It's that church has ch changed. When it comes to truth, I want you to write this down. If it's new, it ain't true. If all of a sudden, oh, we've discovered this new insight, and this is a new truth, if it's new, it's not true. It's bad grammar, but great theology. Truth does not change. Amen? Cultures change. Societies change. But God's Word remains forever. So I want to give you seven reasons, and this is all spoken in grace and in love. So if you fit this category and you're convicted, just know there's forgiveness at the foot of the cross. The first reason people give is everybody is doing it. How many of you have ever heard that reason? Everyone's doing it. Is that a valid reason for doing it just because everyone's doing it? Romans 12, 2 says, don't let the world squeeze you into its mold. Don't be conformed to the world. Instead, be transformed. Jesus said that we're to be like salt and light. So if you're just like the world, how are you being any different from the world? How is your light shining if you're just like everybody else? Reason number two, this is big. You'll hear this all throughout America. We're in a committed relationship, so it's okay. Now, commitment is good, but commitment is not marriage. In God's eyes, the only commitment that counts concerning intimacy is a covenant before God. Amen? So someone can say, well, we're, we're, we're committed. No. Listen to Hebrews 13, 4. This is a verse you often do not hear in church. It says, marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled. In other words, God celebrates intimacy in marriage. It's like a blessing. But look at the next phrase. But fornicators and adulterers God will judge. This, this shows you how serious sex before marriage is. God doesn't look at it lightly. He doesn't just say, it's okay. He's like, listen, I, the, the reason why this is so personal, it's a reflection of God's love for the church. So it, it, does your relationship reflect God's love for the church? If not, this is an invitation for it to start. Number three, we've been living together for a long time, so it's practically marriage. That's a big reason people give. They call it legal marriage or legal law. So cohabitation doesn't equal marriage. How do I know that? Turn to John 4. Jesus meets this woman at the well, and he said, go call your husband. And what does she say? Well, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, you're right. You've had five husbands, and the guy you're shacked up with, cohabitating with, he's not your husband. So Jesus clearly recognizes the difference between living together and marriage. Number four, I've heard this, we're planning to get married eventually. So what, what's the response to that? Well, until you're married, you're not married. So just because you have good plans, it doesn't set the same standard as what God has. Proverbs 16, 9, it says, A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Number five, this is big in Asheville. For those of you outside of Asheville, you may not hear this as much, but we love each other, that's what matters. Right? How many of you have heard that? We love each other. Love is love. Well, let's use a little logic, first of all. You can't define a word by the word. That's like saying dog is dog, blue is blue. <laughs> Who defines what love is? God defines what love is. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, that love is holy. So if what you're doing is not holy, you can call it a lot of things, but please don't call it love. God's love is holy. It's sep separate. And Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. There are many Christians who will claim love for Jesus. But the test is this, are you following his commandments? If you're not, please don't claim that you love and follow Jesus. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do what? You'll keep my commandments. Number six, it feels right to us. So if you followed your feelings, where would that get you in life? You would have to quit your job like every other day. You wouldn't get out of bed in the morning. Your feelings cannot be trusted. So whoever came up with the phrase, follow your heart, they didn't read Jeremiah the prophet who said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So in other words, the heart apart from God, don't follow your old heart. 
Unless your heart has been regenerate and you're following the Holy Spirit, that's different. All right, number seven, a little backdrop of this one. I used to be a singles pastor in Texas, and I would, this was like one of the big excuses. I've already been married before. So divorcees would say, hey, I've already been married, so it doesn't matter if I'm living with someone. It doesn't matter if I'm you know, intimate because I've already done it. So does your experiences change God's standards? So think about that. You're basically saying, based upon my present and past experiences, the Bible changes to meet what I've done or haven't done. Listen, truth is truth. So if you've been divorced and you're now single, follow God's standards God's way. It doesn't matter how many times you've been married. It's are you willing to do God's will right now? Amen? So here's the thing. As we read this, this is very convicting to our culture. And probably majority of us would say at some point we've fallen short. And it's not meant to bring guilt or condemnation, but it's meant to bring direction for your life. So if I was single and if I had messed up in the past, I would hear this message and I pray that my prayer would be from this day forward, even though I've messed up a thousand times, I'm going to do it God's way going forward. It's called being a spiritual virgin. And if you've been married and divorced, regardless of the circumstances, it's saying from this day forward, if God sends me someone else, I'm going to do it God's way. And all God's people said, amen.